Hey everyone, that sound in the background is my brand new Webasto Airtop 2000 gas heater. It's also the sound of me saving $900 to $1,500 in installation costs by doing it myself last weekend. All jokes aside, that is what I was quoted um, when I reached out to three different outfitters to have them install the Webasto gas heater. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how I installed it and the improvements that I made to make this thing quieter and a little bit more reliable uh, when you're driving down the road. Quick disclaimer, if you guys are not comfortable with working with electrical and being underneath the van um, and working with, with fuel, gasoline, I would recommend you reach out to a professional or somebody with a little bit more experience to help you out with this install. Um, please use this video as a reference to supplement your own research, but not as a dedicated how-to video. If you guys are going to attempt to do this install yourself, I highly recommend checking out the Far Out Ride how-to guide on their Webasto S-Bar installation. Uh, that guide is very robust and comes with a lot of information and I guarantee you guys will learn something new. So I have to give credit to them for helping out with this install. I did, however, make some improvements and you'll see that along the way here with some of the more raw footage. The first thing I did was change out the fuel pump uh, clamp that ties uh, that that screws into the body of the van. The one that came with my kit was a metal bracket and the pump will make a noticeable ticking sound which transfers to the entirety of the van chassis. I swapped that out with a rubber um, bracket which greatly reduced that noise, that clicking noise. Uh, the second thing that I did was I lined the fuel pump, uh, not the fuel pump, the fuel line in a 3 8 uh, sleeve, plastic sleeve. It's routed underneath the van so it's going to get hit, hit with rocks, mud, whatever. Um, glass uh, potentially puncturing it so I lined it in a sleeve to further uh, strengthen and uh, eliminate that risk of puncture. Uh, the third thing I did was line the electrical um, wiring in a plastic conduit sleeve and you'll see that in the video. The fourth improvement that I made during this installation was I actually wrapped both the fuel line and the electrical wiring that goes over the axle and the exhaust heat shield in a, an exhaust wrap to prevent it from getting burned while it's underneath the van tucked away. And one more thing, I noticed that 70% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel. So if you could and found this video helpful, please hit that like and subscribe button and let's grow this channel so other builders and DIYers can, can find this channel and hopefully help them uh, with their build as well. And to give you guys a quick preview of some of the upcoming videos that I plan on making on this channel, I'm going to be making the bed frame next. That one is going to be a unique Murphy bed um, style bed frame made out of 8020. I'm going to be partnering with Vancillary uh, to come up with a headliner shelf in the cab area that'll have a drop down privacy curtain. So you guys want to stay tuned for that one and I'll also be doing a video on all the plumbing connecting the sink to the water tank and I'm partnering with Northwest Conversions for that video as well so they sent me a 20 gallon over the wheel well water tank and I'm gonna show you guys how to hook that up and get your sink running with a hot water heater and I'll show you what I plan to do for my shower let me know how you guys would have installed it differently in the comments section below. And if you guys want to support the channel, there's ways that you can do that in the description of this video. Thanks again for watching. You'll need to lower the gas tank in order to access the auxiliary port. I recommend driving until you have about 50 miles left on the tank. I took this opportunity to drive down to Half Moon Bay, California to grab a cup of coffee. You're going to need it for this install. It's a long one. Take a quick inventory of all the pieces you're going to need for this installation. My kit for some reason was missing three parts that I needed in order to complete my install. Assemble the heater components with the rubber gasket going in first, followed by the steel plate. Fasten down using the provided 10 millimeter bolts and washers. With the fuel pump, take note of the arrow indicating the fuel flow direction coming from your gas tank to your Robosto. It's, the, it's on the same side as the electrical plug. 
here you can see the rubber bracket that I swapped out. You can see the one that came with my kit has a metal connection point and the other one is rubber, which greatly reduces the ticking sound. This is the 7.5 millimeter to 4.5 millimeter elbow that was missing with my kit that you're gonna need for the Ford Transit. These clamps were also missing from my kit, so I ended up having to buy these separately. This ties the air duct to the heater all the way to your vent. You will need to order from Ford this auxiliary fuel port used to tie the heater to the fuel tank. I recommend buying the Wabasto elbow here instead of making your own to eliminate any air bubbles or air pockets that could potentially happen from making your own. Make sure you order the yellow version, which indicates it's for gas. If you get the blue version, that means it's for diesel. You're going to need to use a 13 millimeter socket to loosen the six bolts holding the fuel tank to the bottom of the van. Don't worry about the components sagging as there's enough slack to lower it down. Here's a shot of the other side of the fuel tank next to the drive axle. Don't mind all the rust, apparently this is typical with all Fords coming out these days. Coming down from the driver's side, you're going to access underneath the van the now lowered fuel tank. And the fuel port has a temporary plug also in yellow. You're going to want to remove that by clicking on either side of the part and pulling it up and out. Push the yellow piece out and squeeze the two sides and the port should just come out. Here's what that looks like once you've taken it off. And here's what it looks like when you install the new auxiliary port. Make sure you push the yellow piece back in. It was at this moment that I realized why they charged so much for this job. On to installing the fuel pump. You can see I labeled the gas on the right and the heater on the left. After you've installed the auxiliary port, we're going to install our fuel filter. Make sure the fuel is entering around the filter and not into the filter basket, like so. Again, take note of the arrow and the direction of the fuel traveling on the same side as the electrical plug. Here's a closer look at the bracket. With this bracket, you'll have a hard time sleeping hearing all that ticking. We're going to install the new bracket using a plus nut in an existing hole so we don't have to drill any new holes in the van. You'll need to trim the fuel line once you have the fuel tank back up and installed. You can see here there's a hole just big enough for us to put in a plus nut. You'll need to squeeze the plus nut bulb just ever so slightly to get it in, but it'll work. Here you can see I have the auxiliary fuel line now connected to the fuel filter that's connected to the fuel pump, which is connected to the chassis of the van. The next thing we're going to do is line the fuel line with a 3 8 sleeve just to protect it from any road debris. An easy way to do this is to tape the line onto the door, straighten it out, and insert your fuel line. Here you can see how I routed my fuel line up and around the front of the fuel tank. I 
I pushed it as high as I could to the floor of the chassis, zip tied it to some existing points, made sure it was over the drive axle here. and up and over the exhaust heat shield where it'll come out right underneath your driver or your passenger seat. At this point, I wrapped the fuel line in its own heat shield, but you can see that there's quite a bit of room between the exhaust and the heat shield. The next thing we're going to do is wrap the electrical in its own plastic sleeve to protect it from any road debris as well. You'll also need to crimp and wire the connectors. Here's a look at the connectors that you're going to need to crimp. The heater itself has the connectors already crimped. You can see that here. And on the other side is the fuel pump. Don't worry about the polarity. Um, there's no requirement there for this. Just make sure that you install it neatly and it clicks when you enter, insert it into these plastic plugs. You can also see the small vent that came with my kit and the one that I swapped it out with, which is at an angle and can actually rotate. Instead of making three separate holes for this installation, I'm gonna encapsulate all of these penetrations in one large four by three hole. Take your time in determining where you're gonna set your heater. You're going to need to cut out a little bit of the vinyl in order to place it down. I'm going to use a hole saw to get the opening started, but use a jigsaw to finish the rest of the job. You can see the underside here has quite a bit of space but you just have to be careful not to hit any of these existing framing members below. Use the ribs on the floor as reference points for when you get above the van again. You can also use these spot welds as a reference point when you get above. For the fuel pump wire that's attached to the Wabasto, I put a little bit of electrical tape where it fits into this notch just to protect it a little bit more. Before crimping the fuel pump wires, install these blue rubber grommets, which will make your life much easier. I recommend removing the seat base when you fasten the Webasto plate onto the van floor. This makes things a little bit easier and gives you a little bit more room. You'll need to use a 15 millimeter socket to remove the four bolts. For the vent hole, I used a two and a half inch size hole saw and just this Ryobi drill to cut it out. Make sure you file and paint any of the rough edges so that it doesn't rust. Here's a shot of underneath the Wabasto heater. You can see the exhaust coming out from underneath the van, the heat shield, and the air intake that's attached to an existing hole on the frame. Now that all the work underneath the van is complete, all we need to do is plug in all the electrical and we'll
will be one step closer to getting some heat. This section of the wire harness delivers the power to the Robusto and comes with an inline fuse. The red is the positive and the brown is a negative and you're going to need to connect this to your in-house battery. I routed the wires down the pillar here up and over the ceiling and into my AC200 and my control panel. I routed the digital controller and timer for the Webasto using that same route. You can see I removed some of the panels here to do that. Uh, went up and over the ceiling and down the pillar. You'll need to use an extension cable if, you wanna, if you're going to have the controller travel this far, but I think it's worth it. When I first turned on the unit, I received this error code H88 with a flashing red light. I went ahead and opened up the manual and this indicated that I had an electrical error. Um, it actually ended up being much simpler than that. It indicates here I have a fuel pump interruption. Electrical check and fuel check was recommended, so I went ahead and plugged in the plug all the way in until I heard a click, so make sure you do that. I started the unit up again, and I got another error code, H02, which was basically indicating that the fuel was not getting to the heater. And this will happen roughly three to four times or about 15 minutes of turning the unit on and off again until you get the fuel to prime the system and ignite the Webasto heater. On the fourth or fifth try, uh, the fuel finally reached the spark or the ignition in the heater and I was finally receiving some heat in the cabin, which was awesome. I'll show you guys how to prime the system uh, in a different way so that the unit starts up the first try. You can see here the fuel is, is making its way through the fuel filter and into the fuel pump. My kit came with this digital display and timer, which is nice, so you can turn the unit on and off while you're sleeping or set it to a certain temperature um, at a certain time of day. That way, if you're out skiing or getting ready for a trip, you can warm up the cabin beforehand. The installation process is identical, whether you have the digital control or the, di or the dial. From what I saw, the unit averaged about 40 to 120 watts consumption while operating. If you'd like to save some time and prime the fuel line prior to turning on the Webasto unit, you can use an industrial syringe to suck some fuel out of the fuel tank and into the fuel pump 
using this syringe. You can also check to see if you have uh, a leak in your system by pushing the syringe in and if it pushes in that means you have a leak in your system if it stays put that means your system is secure and tight and to pull out the fuel you just pull out on the syringe the last step is to install the Wabasto warning sticker on your gas cap and you're officially done enjoy the heat guys all right you guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions please let me know i'll try to get to them as always all the products i use are in the description of this video and if you like this video found it helpful go ahead and hit that like button subscribe and share this video to anybody who might be doing the same thing so that um, the channel grows and we all help each other out so thanks again for watching and take care